Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I will go unto the altar of God. Even unto the God of my joy and gladness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who hath made him a Lord. I confess to Almighty God, the Blessed Mary, the Virgin, the Blessed Michael, the Archangel, the Blessed John Baptist, the Holy Apostles, Peter and Paul, all the saints that you have known, that I have seen exceedingly in full of word and truth, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I beg, Blessed Mary, the Virgin, the Blessed Michael, the Archangel, the Blessed John the Baptist, the Holy Apostles, Peter and Paul, all the saints and you, brethren, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Almighty God, have mercy upon thee, forgive thee thy sins, and bring thee to everlasting life. Amen. I confess to Almighty God, to Blessed Mary of the Virgin, to Blessed Michael the Archangel, to Blessed John the Baptist, to the Holy Apostles, Peter and Paul, to all the saints, and to thee, Father, that thou have sinned exceedingly in full word and deed, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I beg blessed Mary of the Virgin, blessed Michael the Archangel, blessed John the Baptist, the Holy Apostles, Peter and Paul, all the saints, and the Father, to pray for me to the Lord their God. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, grant unto us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. Amen. But not only totally gave you quickness, O God. The thy people may rejoice in you. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O Lord, hear my prayer. And let my cry come unto thee. The Lord be with you. And with us. Let us pray. But deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, grant to whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Sentence with me, O God, and defend my cause against the ungodly people. O deliver my soul from the deceitful and wicked man, for thou art the God of my strength. O send out thy light and thy truth, that they may lead me, and bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy dwelling. Give sentence with me, O God, and defend my cause against the ungodly people. O deliver my soul from the deceitful and wicked man, for thou art the God of my strength. Lord have mercy upon us. Lord have mercy upon us. Lord have mercy upon us. Christ have mercy upon us. Christ have mercy upon us. Christ have mercy upon us. Lord have mercy upon us. Lord have mercy upon us. Lord have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. We beseech the Almighty God mercifully to look upon thy people, that by thy great goodness they may be governed and preserved evermore, both in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who makest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness may obtain of thee the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The lesson is from the Epistle of Blessed Paul the Apostle to the Hebrews. Brethren, Christ being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, 
that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance in Christ Jesus our Lord. Here endeth the lesson. Thanks be to God. Deliver me, O Lord, from mine enemies. Teach me to do the thing that pleaseth thee. It is the Lord that delivereth me from my cruel enemies, and setteth me up above mine adversaries. Thou shalt rid me from the wicked man. Many a time have they fought against me from my youth up. May Israel now say, Yea, many a time have they vexed me from my youth up. But they have not prevailed against me. The plows ploughed upon my back and made long furrows, but the righteous Lord hath hewn the snares of the ungodly in pieces. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The continuation of the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory be, be to thee, O Lord. Lord. At that time, Jesus said, Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not because ye are not of God. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honour my father, and ye do dishonour me, and I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Whom makest thou thyself? Jesus answered, If I honour myself, my honour is nothing. It is my Father that honoureth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him. But I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him, and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it, and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Then took they up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself, and went out of the temple. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ.
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Good morning, a very warm welcome to you to this chapel of St Nicholas in the garden of my home in Lyd on the Romney Marsh in Kent. I say a very warm greeting to you, but it's not very warm today. It's very chilly in this chapel, and as you will have heard, we've also had some heavy rain. So that pitter-patter was um, the sound of the raindrops on our tin roof. In these exceptional times during this COVID-19 pandemic, I know many of you, whether you be regular churchgoers or not, are missing the opportunity to go to your own church, to make your communion, and to have fellowship with your friends and brethren. I know that this pains your clergy too, and the difficulties we all face must be met with faith and fortitude. Metropolitan Tikon of the Orthodox Church of America issued a pastoral statement to his people regarding the present crisis, and one passage in particular stood out for me. It read, Our Lord tells us, Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. He goes on to say, the life we are laying down now is our normal life, because these are extraordinary times. We are making a sacrificial effort, which is in keeping with the present season of repentance and aesthetical striving. We should take this opportunity to prayerfully reflect on our life in Christ and increase our desire to be with him. In modern everyday life, if we use the term passion, it usually means that we have an enthusiasm, a fervent desire or a deep love for something. However, the word passion, when used to describe the next two weeks in the church's year, refers specifically to the way it is used in the book of Acts, in chapter 1, verse 3, to illustrate the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ. It reads, To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Today, Passion Sunday, finds our statues and other images veiled in purple, hidden away, just as at the end of our Gospel reading we heard Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. The normal images which surround us in church, which are usually so very helpful, are today helpful in a different way. By being hidden, they allow us to focus exclusively on one important fact, the passion of the Christ, the deep love that Jesus has for us and the price he was willing to pay for that love. This correct use of the term passion relates to Christ's dying on the cross for our sins. Jesus, wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace being upon him. By his stripes we are healed. In the epistle from St Paul to the Hebrews, we have it plainly stated, by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us. The passion of the Christ involves his pain, his suffering, and the shedding of his blood. It is this which we must remember when the words that we may be worthy of the promises of Christ so easily rolls off our tongues. Christ willingly took our place when he died on the Calvary's cross. He is the propitiation 
for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word propitiation means satisfaction, in the sense that our Lord's death satisfied the just demands of the judgment due for our sins. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the only remedy for sin, the only way for us to be in a right relationship with God. His dying on the cross is the means whereby the great gulf between sinful man and the holy God has been bridged. It is God's plan of salvation for us. There is no other way. Neither is there salvation in any other. For we are told that there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So how should we respond to the passion of the Christ? Well, perhaps we can find the beginning of the answer in the more common, familiar use of the word passion. We must develop a passion for Christ. We must have an enthusiasm, a fervent desire, a deep love for him. He must become our first thought in the morning and our last thought at night. We must live every day seeking to please him. Everything else takes second place. Where does that leave our families and our friends and our other responsibilities? Well, my friends, getting right with God, putting him first, establishing and maintaining a good relationship with him is the best and most effective foundation upon which we can show our love for our families, our friends and our greater responsibilities. How do we establish this foundation? St Peter writes, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. How do we humble ourselves before God? Well, Peter tells us in the next verse, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. The apostle makes it plain, humble yourself by casting your cares upon the Lord. Humility requires trust. To be humble, you have to trust God's goodness towards you. True humility has at its very core a total dependence on God. The word dependence means trust for all things, trust in all things. On Friday evening, just gone, I was moved to watch on television Pope Francis offering prayer for us all in an empty St Peter's Square in Rome. Prayer for the whole world in the grip of this present crisis. His Holiness prayed, Lord, you are calling to us, calling us to faith, which is not so much believing that you exist, but coming to you and trusting in you. This Lent, your call reverberates urgently. Be converted. Return to me with all your heart. You are calling on us to seize this time of trial as a time of choosing. It is not the time of your judgment, but of our judgment. A time to choose what matters and what passes away. A time to separate what is necessary from what is not. It is a time to get our lives back on track with regard to you, Lord and others. He went on to say, the Lord asks us and in the midst of our tempest invites us to reawaken and put into practice that solidarity and hope capable of giving strength, support and meaning to these hours when everything seems to be floundering, so as to reawaken and revive our Easter faith. We have an anchor by his cross, 
we have been saved. We have a rudder by his cross. We have been redeemed. We have a hope by his cross. We have been healed and embraced so that nothing and no one can separate us from his redeeming love. In the midst of isolation, when we are suffering from a lack of tenderness and chances to meet up, and we experience the loss of so many things, let us once again listen to the proclamation that saves us. He is risen and he is living by our side. The Lord asks us from his cross to rediscover the life that awaits us, to look towards those who look to us, to strengthen recognise and foster the grace that lies within us. Let us not quench the wavering flame that never falters and let us allow hope to be rekindled. So my brothers and sisters, wherever you are and whoever you are, let us offer the sacrifice of our familiar, normal, comforting life, our freedoms, this passion tide to God. And let us focus on the depth of the love that Jesus has for us and the price he was willing to pay for that love. And through this, we may understand just how joyful and transforming his mighty resurrection truly is. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, for us men, for our salvation, came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Receive, O Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, this spotless host, which I, thine unworthy servant, offer unto thee, my living and true God, for my numberless sins, offences, and negligences, for all here present and for all faithful Christians, both living and departed, that it may avail to me and to them for salvation, unto everlasting life.
We offer unto thee, O Lord, the cup of salvation, humbly beseeching thy mercy, that in the sight of thy divine majesty it may ascend as a sweet smelling savour for our salvation and for that of the whole world. Amen. The spirit of humility will come from our heart us to accept the Lord, so that our sacrifice be offered in thy sight this day, that it may be well pleasing unto thee, O Lord. Our mother, sanctify almighty and eternal God, and bless this sacrifice prepared for thy holy. Receive, O Holy Trinity, this oblation which we offer unto thee in memory of the Passion, Resurrection, and Ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, in honour of Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, of Blessed John Baptist, of the Holy Apostles Peter and Paul, of these and of all the saints, that it may avail for their honour and for our salvation, and may they whose memory we celebrate on earth vouchsafe to intercede for us in heaven, through the same Christ our Lord. We offer this sacrifice of the Mass to the praise and glory of Almighty God, in thanksgiving for the example and intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, of St. Nicholas of Myra, patron of this chapel, St. Augustine of Canterbury, patron of our pro-cathedral, and of all the angels and saints of God who pray for us in heaven. We offer our Mass today for our parish family. We pray especially for those who live and work in the village of Paters Forstall, and here in this town of Lyd, for all those who will worship with us remotely in their homes, unable to attend their own church during this present crisis. We pray for our diocese, our clergy, our laity, and for the wider church around the world. We remember our families and our friends, our neighbours and all whom we know. For those who suffer in body, mind or spirit, for those with joy in their hearts, that they may remember to thank God for his goodness, and for those who mourn the loss of loved ones. We pray especially for those affected by this present pandemic, for the sick and especially the dying. We pray for so many, but at this time especially for Prince Charles and the Prime Minister who have tested positive with the virus. We pray for the protection of all those most vulnerable to disease, and for those who have anxiety and fear. We offer this Mass in thanksgiving for all healthcare workers, doctors and nurses, for those working in nursing and care homes and other key workers, for the armed forces and emergency services, for those working in shops and supermarkets, farms and food distribution, for postmen and women for delivery drivers doing such excellent work, and for the wonderfully huge numbers of selfless and heroic volunteers who have answered the call to come forward and serve the most vulnerable. We pray that all be shielded from infection, strengthened and guided. We pray for those searching for treatments, cures and vaccines, that they may be inspired and that their work be swift and mercifully effective. We pray too today for Credo Care, the fostering agency for disabled children, for the carers, for the staff and most of all for the children in our care. We pray for the victims of war and terrorism, for crime and man's inhumanity to man. We pray too for the men and women of violence themselves with the intent that they may realise the evil that they do, repent of it, 
and amend their lives. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world who suffer for Christ's sake. We pray for an end to their suffering and persecution. And we remember the departed, especially those among our families and friends who have died, and those whose loss is still keenly felt in our hearts and minds. For the recently departed, for those whose anniversaries fall at this time, and we pray for those who are at this very moment passing from this life, especially those who are alone, afraid or in pain. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable unto God the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive the sacrifice of my hands to the praise and glory of his name, to our benefit also, and that of all his holy church. Amen. Throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto the O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Because by the tree of the cross thou hast wrought the salvation of the race of man, that whence death arose, thence also life might rise again, and that who, he who by a tree was once the vanquisher might also by a tree be vanquished, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications, and to give thanks for all men. We humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these, our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Especially we beseech thee to save and defend thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole counsel and to all that are put in authority under her. And likewise we beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, that they may truly and indifferently minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of God's true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to Mark David, our Archbishop, and to all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And especially we commend unto thy merciful goodness. And this congregation, which is here assembled in thy name, to celebrate the commemoration 
of the most glorious death of thy Son. And here we do give unto thee most high praise and hearty thanks for the wonderful grace and virtue declared in all thy saints from the beginning of the world, and chiefly in the glorious and most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, and in the holy patriarchs, prophets, apostles and martyrs, whose examples, O Lord, and steadfastness in thy faith, and keeping thy holy commandments, grant us to follow. We commend unto thy mercy, O Lord, all other thy servants which are departed hence from us with the sign of faith, and now do rest in the sleep of peace. Grant unto them, we beseech thee, thy mercy and everlasting peace, and that at the day of the general resurrection, we and all thy servants, which be of the mystical body of thy Son, may altogether be set on his right hand, and hear that his most joyful voice. Come unto me, O ye that be blessed of my Father, and possess the kingdom which is prepared for you from the beginning of the world. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only Mediator and Advocate. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and in institute and in his holy gospel, command us to celebrate a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we beseech thee, and with thy Holy Spirit and word vouchsafe to bless and sanctify these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy most dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had blessed and given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty, with these thy holy gifts, the memorial which thy Son hath willed us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion, mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same entirely desiring thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies to be a reasonable, holy and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee, that whosoever shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body 
and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with thy Son, Jesus Christ, that he may dwell in them and they in him. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, and command these our prayers and supplications by the ministry of thy holy angels to be brought up into thy holy tabernacle before the sight of thy divine majesty, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences through Christ our Lord. by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty. Throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Amen. Let us pray as our Saviour Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, we beseech thee, O Lord, from all evils, past, present, and to come, and with the intercession of the blessed and glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and thy blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and Andrew, and all thy saints, to give peace graciously in our days. That we, being called on by the suffer of thy mercy, may both always be free from sin, and safe from all disquiet. Save Jesus Christ. Thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be away with you. And with thy spirit. May this mingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ avail us to receive. Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. O Lord Jesus Christ, who saidst to thine apostles, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Regard not my sins, but the faith of thy church, and grant to it that peace and unity which is according to thy will, who livest and reignest God, world without end. Amen. Peace be with you. And with thy spirit. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood. Sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. I will receive the bread of heaven. Lord, I am not worthy. Lord, I am not worthy. Lord, I am not worthy. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you, preserved in the body of the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
seek to cover salvation, call upon the name of the Lord. And call upon the Lord whose mercy we praise, and so shall I be saved. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life.
Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. This is my body which is given for you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, saith the Lord. This do ye as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. In the words of our thanksgiving, we pray together. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee, for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries, with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate, in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully, O Lord our God, that we whom thou hast here refreshed with thy holy mysteries may be defended by thy perpetual succour. Through Jesus Christ, thy only Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. We beseech thee, Lord, mercifully to protect us who have now received this holy sacrament, that this our fast may be acceptable in thy sight, and profitable unto us for the healing of our souls. Through Jesus Christ, thy only Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you and remain with you now and evermore. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The beginning of the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth thanks, thanks be to god. god lord save thy servant elizabeth our queen and hear us when we call upon thee. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray that thy servant, our Queen Elizabeth, who by thy mercy has undertaken the government of this realm, may receive increase of all the virtues, fit adornment for a queen, 
enabling her to shun all foul temptations, overcome her enemies, and with the prince, her consort, and the royal family, be welcomed at the last by thee who art the way, the truth, and the life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.